The Connect Fusion software allows anyone to create a 3D model of a real-world scene about as fast as they can move the camera around the scene. The system generates 3D models with quality and speed that far surpass anything we've seen before, especially when you consider its costs. In the time since this video started, a system that costs less than $1,000 will be able to generate the 3D model you see on the right of your screen. All it requires is a standard computer and NVIDIA graphics processor. The Kinect camera itself can be bought for less than $100. In this scene, you'll see that the system can even be used as a cheap object scanner by first scanning in the whole scene and then moving the object that you want to separate from the rest of the model. Clearly, the software gives the computer the ability to learn which parts of the scene are individual objects that can be moved and tracked independently. The hardware and software that make up the system are a culmination of decades of research and development. I argue that the system is so effective it will crack wide open the hardest problems of artificial intelligence and make them solvable much sooner than I previously believed. Some examples of these difficult problems are natural language processing, directly answering questions when we use a search engine, and understanding the content of regular pictures the way that people do. This system gives us the tools we need to gather vast amounts of knowledge about the world in digital form, which is required to solve the hardest problems in artificial intelligence. It has never before been possible to gather such detailed knowledge about the real world so effectively, so quickly, and so cheaply. This is why I argue that the Connect Camera and Connect Fusion system will drastically accelerate progress in artificial intelligence and finally make it possible for computers to help us solve our most difficult problems. It's only a matter of time until someone uses this system to gather immense amounts of knowledge about the real world. In fact, there's no reason it can't be done today. It would be almost trivial for experienced computer vision researchers to add on to Connect Fusion for this purpose. Now I'll try to explain briefly and with as little jargon as possible how Connect and Connect Fusion create amazing 3D models. The Connect 3D camera has an infrared projector, which it uses to project hundreds of dots onto the scene. The dots are invisible unless you have a night vision camera, because infrared light is invisible to the naked eye. 30 times a second, the Connect takes two pictures of the scene, one using a regular camera and one using an infrared camera, which is able to detect the infrared dots on the scene. Each Kinect has hard-coded information about the pattern its projector creates, such as the trajectory of each dot and their relative positions. This information allows the Kinect to match what it sees with its stored information. So when it is able to uniquely identify a group of dots, it can determine the original trajectories out of the projector. After determining the depth of each point in the scene that it is able to detect, the result is a depth map, like this one. The lighter grays represent objects that are closer, the darker grays represent objects that are farther. But the depth map is not perfect. You can see lots of little bumps and flickers in the real depth map videos. As a result, smoothing is required to reduce the effects of errors. Connect Fusion uses something called bilateral filtering, which preserves edges. You can also apply this sort of filtering to regular images. The next step that Connect Fusion takes is to map the current depth map, which is also called the current frame, with the most current model. It does this using a variant of an algorithm called iterative closest point. The purpose of this algorithm is basically to take two models and find the best match between them. That is, if there is a good match at all. These models are in the form of point clouds, which is basically the th 3D version of a depth map. The algorithm works by estimating the error between two models and then trying to find a movement and rotation, which is called a transformation, 
that reduces this estimated error as much as possible. Once the algorithm finds a transformation, it applies it and then starts over again. It repeats these steps again and again until it either finds a good fit or rejects it because it couldn't find a good match. The most important part of this algorithm is starting it with the best initial guess to make sure that it does find a good match. But I won't go into detail here about how Microsoft does this. If a good match is found, the algorithm then knows the relative position of the infrared camera and the current model. It can also take the current depth data and add it into the current model where it matched using an algorithm called TSDF. This makes the model more detailed, more refined, and expands it. This also has the effect of reducing errors over time as the errors are smoothed out as more and more data is collected. The great thing about this algorithm is that it naturally deals with the uncertainty of the model and changes to the scene by averaging out any differences. As new data is collected, objects that have moved sort of melt out of the scene. The last part is applying color, which is also called applying a texture. How this is done was not explained in the papers I've read so far, but at each step of the algorithm, we know the position of the regular camera relative to the model because it has a fixed position with respect to the projector and the infrared camera. So, one could readily come up with algorithms that collect color along with the model and keep the highest resolution images for each section of the model. So that's all there is to it, except of course for all the little details that it's taken researchers decades to figure out. But now that you understand the general overview of the algorithm, you can read through the original research papers and actually be able to understand something. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new.